Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, beesh. It's really Wednesday. Oh, today is really Wednesday. It is. It's hump day. How are you feeling? I feel good. I'm smoking. You know, we had a little last minute guest cancellation. So in Good Mom style and Mila Erica style, we scrappy as fuck. We just figure some shit out. And actually, I think this is going to be really cool. I think this episode is going to be actually interesting. We've never done anything like this before. I know. Shout out to whoever gave us a suggestion. Who was it? Because this is this was a good idea. So right now we're on live and people are going to join the live or type in uh, advice questions. So we can answer them and then you could be a guest on the show. Hey. Um, but first... Tarot time. Tarot time. Tarot time. Isn't that what it does? Yeah, it does do that. (laughs) Okay. Should I spot out? I'm going to just close my eyes and select one. I feel like I'm playing, like, a magic game. We pulled this yesterday. We did? The lovers. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? (gasps) Yeah, it is crazy. Um, I've pulled this so many times in the last week. You told me that. And also, I uh, before that, this fell out of the deck, which is the Ace of Cups. Um, shout out to Mahogany Tarot deck. It's the original tarot deck, traditional style, but all the images are black people. Um, so, yeah, the lovers... What what do they what does this mean? It's usually about um, success. It's about um, I think it's partnership, partnership, success. I even think it's travel. Yeah, travel. It mm-hmm. is travel. Um, and before that, Ace of Cups fell out. And usually, I don't really know a lot about uh, the other. De- like, I know more about like I don't know. I think the Ace of Cups. Ace is usually the beginning. How about this? And cups. Oh, your phone is working. <laughs> and cups are for emotions. So it's the beginning of something new and bountiful, abundant. There's travel and there's love. There's partnership, strength and partnership. Okay. Love, new relationships, compassion, creativity. Mm. So with the Ace of Cups, divine love and compassion are pouring through you. You are a vessel for deep spiritual love from the universe, and you can't help but let the love flow through you and into the world. You receive love. You give love. You are love. Your heart overflows. Now is the perfect time for you to open your heart and experience the rich flow of emotion available to you right now. You are more receptive to creative opportunities, loving connections, and deep compassion for other living beings. As with all aces and tarots, this card comes as an invitation. Will you take it? Will you say yes? Yes. To divine love and compassion? Yes, I will. And will you run with it? I will. I'm running the, fast. Okay, well, because the Ace of Cups carries the potential for spiritual and emotional fulfillment, but only if you embrace it with an open heart. <sighs> I'm opening my heart. Mm-hmm. Mm, that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at that. Look at God. Mm. So, oh, also, we have an affirmation, right? What is our affirmation? I don't know. I'm just saying it's affirmation. Oh, I was time. like, we do. You have one, bitch. You no, I'm just sticking to the schedule. A good job. <laughs> I can think of one. Does anyone else have an affirmation? Um, hmm. Okay, the affirmation is going is. <laughs> I have it. Okay, I am open to divine love in whatever shape or form it takes. I am open to divine love in whatever shape or form it takes. Because I was like, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am rich, I am that bitch. I am that bitch. <laughs> That's what I was going to do. I'm not going to take your shit. I, mean, I was listening to that to, in the other uh, in the other day uh, with Irie in the car. <laughs> and she was like, Mommy, who is this? And I said, Baby Tate. <laughs> <laughs> not so serious, Baby Tate. And she was like, who? I was like, Baby Tate. She's like, Baby Fake? I was like, no, Tate. And she's like, I like this song. I was like, I know. I know. I wouldn't even be mad if you said bitch at the, in this song. I really, I really, if they curse during good songs, I, I could turn them. My daughter's so good. She literally no, will your skip daughter, every word. Like, no. she will skip. She be cursing? She, yes. <gasps> Iris the one, I'd be like, first of all, she knows all the lyrics. She I does. don't even know all the lyrics. <laughs> I don't know how she even knows these words. Second of all, she'd be saying the words. I'd be listening. And they don't think I, li- they don't think I'm paying attention. She even taught Luna that in the Savage song, the Savage remix song, instead of saying like bitch, you say chick. 
Oh no, the Doja Cat. Uh, what's that shit? The Saweetie best friend. Oh, uh, that's she a, a real, real bad, bad chick. chick. Yeah. Uh, she did. T- I'm happy because Luna. She- she was saying ratchet and all the other ones. Oh my goodness. I'm like, wow. Are we doing good? Am I doing a good job? My daughter nurse knows all the hoochie songs. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah, I'm a savage. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Yeah. I'm mean, like, wow. I'm really, I hope she's singing this at her very white school. She is. <laughs> Those kids are singing it too. For sure. Um, oh my God. Speaking of that, there's, did I tell you this? There's always like, so. Uh, Luna goes to the elementary school that I went to and it's in a predominantly like white area and it's always been white even when I was in fucking kindergarten so there is this dad who's always he's always in a Tesla and he's always jamming his rap music specifically it's like yeah I think it's like I'm a savage or like a very like female rap <laughs> ratchet song it's always the same song he's always, always the jam- same song yeah he's always <laughs> jamming to it in the line for school on Ventura I've seen him also on Ventura so um you know a couple times I'll stop as I'm walking up the hill and like oh yeah we see you you know type of thing and so the other day he was doing it again as he daily does he's in a good mood and you should see his son's face his son is pissed so me and um luna are walking down and i see i hear over here some other parents like oh my god it's like he's 15 I, he does this every like i know every time like he's 15 and i, I was like these stuffy ass fuck ass bored ass parents <laughs> hating on my nigga in the car, <laughs> car having fun every day so again after I heard them talking shit halfway point through I, I looked over and I you know just broke it down a little bit in the street to shout him out and kept it moving I'm like what I have to, and Luna was like what I was like those parents are fucking haters <laughs> they do sound like some haters I was like, Cause I, but low key Irie <laughs> she makes me turn on my music when I pull into her school mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure her dad does this abrasively when he pulls in like as blasting his music when he's pulling into the school so when we pull in she's like mommy can you can you lower the phone can you lower it i'm like we're listening to run the world what the fuck it's beyonce we were just like going crazy and she's like can you please lower it so i do because i don't want to be that she i also noticed how she kisses me before we get to the through the gate she looked around the other day wow yeah that's hap- that's happening she looked a fucking around and was like the disrespect what the fuck the disrespect um <laughs> Damn, like you bring people into the world, you feed them every day, you clothe them, you put a roof over their head, and they're just like, fuck you, don't kiss me in front of people. (laughs) Came out of your vagina, don't need to do much more, relax. (sighs) We love our kids. I do, I do, I just want her to love me back. I know, today Irie gave me a foot massage in the morning. She woke up before me, I was like, what? Yeah, I was like, actually, she, oh my god, she like really took care of me today. (laughs) She woke up before me, which was crazy. She woke up at 6.15. I was like, she was like, mom? <laughs> From the other room, that's all I hear. Mom? I'm like, Irie? She comes in, and then she cuddles me, and then she massaged my toes. Oh, so nice. And then so cra- cracked each and every one of them. That's so kind. <laughs> I'm going to have to teach Luna how to do that. Wake up early. <laughs> Set an alarm. <laughs> Don't Only- wake mama up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, So we have some questions here okay are we gonna let people dial in or are we gonna answer i don't know i mean we can we can start with a dial in someone asked like what's the best way to break up with someone text no i'm just kidding (laughs) i'm joking ghost (laughs) don't say shit (laughs) break up with them in your head they'll get it they'll get it eventually (laughs) that's a total joke um i would just say yeah to do it Nothing to it but to do it, you know. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. Just be honest. I know that's the worst advice. I hate that advice, but just be honest. I'm bored. Yeah, I mean, I broke up with someone, I guess, like, it's been almost a year and a half now, and it was like, we went for a walk. <laughs> I went to his house. I said, we should, we should go for a walk. <laughs> a walk. We walked down the stairs. He was, like, trying his best. I keep, I think he knew it was coming. <laughs> He was trying his best. The one, my like, favorite. Opening every door. My favorite. Like, massaging my neck and shit. Yeah, your favorite. <laughs> your fellow cancer. Yeah. And yeah, we just, you know, we talked about everything that had been going on in the relationship, which was a lot of bullshit. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, I just, yeah, it just with all that said, it's not going to work. It's not, it's not working. 
That's all you can say. It's not working. This isn't serving me anymore. That's literally what I said. I was like, this doesn't serve me anymore. It doesn't feel good to me anymore. When I, you know, when we talk, it doesn't feel like we're hearing one another. We've tried everything. I feel like we've really given it a chance. We went to therapy, my <laughs> nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Never we forget. went to therapy. Never my forget nigga. the time Erica had a six month relationship and went to I was a therapy. therapy. Three months into the six month relationship, <laughs> bitch. Bless your heart. I, Bless your heart, my love. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, can't nobody tell me I didn't try. Imagine being her friend. Like, uh huh. Super normal. <laughs> Even my therapist was like, you know, this isn't normal. I was like, if the therapist is telling you, why the fuck are you here, bitch? Like, if your therapist is passing you post-it notes, (laughs) run. Bless our therapist. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was my breakup. And yeah, it was just like, this isn't serving me anymore. It doesn't feel good. And of course, niggas will try to push back. But you just have to really have the boundaries and leave immediately. Don't linger around and try to be like, well, now that we're broken up, we can just like be friends, right? No, go flee and don't talk for at least 45 days. That's my advice. Yeah, that's great advice. (laughs) Also block each other on Instagram so you don't go stalk each other's shit. It's still going to happen. No, you have to can't. You can't do it if you really want to be broken up. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what I'm doing wrong? (laughs) <laughs> I okay, maybe I stalk a little bit. Not that I care. I just want to see what's going on. I don't on. care. I'm just I looking. Really, I'm just looking. <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> huh. Don't care at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, MG. Oh my god, the last time I called myself stalking someone. First of all, I know I'm a stalker because the page is gener- always private. But sometimes I'll just check to see maybe if it got public. And the what this was obviously super intentional for me. And I looked over there and I looked at the stories because I'm even crazier. And I don't I didn't even do it from a private like a, a secret page. It was my page. And um, he was like posting another girl. And it was really soon after we had. Well, we didn't even break up. He just left and never came back. <laughs> That sounds so sad, baby. Oh my god, Aww. it was sad. It was really sad. I said, "Get the fuck out," but then <laughs> and he did, and then he never called me again. <laughs> wow, I, it was sad. I'm kind of sad about it. Anyway, I went to go stalk over there, and he was posting another bitch, and I was like, "Yeah, this is what my bitch ass gets." <laughs> <Looking>. <laughs> Not this is what my bitch ass gets. That's how I felt. Like, wow. Like, it was so intentional. Well, I I mean. It was like, I'm so happy with you. You make me breathe. (laughs) I'm like, how? We were just together two weeks ago. That's what it said? It was some shit like that. Not you make me breathe. No, it's like, I'm the happiest. You, I'm at my happiest when I am with you. I'm like. But you were just with me for a year. Poor girl. <laughs> She's just a pawn. I think it was like even an old video. I don't even think it was recent. Niggas be really having old like videos had... to bring out of the, like when they need to like pull some shit out to make someone jealous or believe they didn't get beat up. They do that. It's crazy. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so those are two different ways to break up, but I hope you can use one of them. <laughs> Probably Erica's. <sighs> that was a good one. Any other questions? You might have some questions. Oh, we do. We have questions in there. The oh, question mark? oh, wait. Okay. And we have a request. Someone wants to come in. Okay, maybe it's Ivory. Okay, the question. I have a whole story. Add me to the live. Okay. Okay. Well, that's e- that's how to help my child through the sorrow of her dad forming a new family, wife and kids. She is devastated. Okay, we'll get to that. Okay, that's- should we just answer the live? Yeah. Wow, I don't have the answer for that. How do you do this like that? Yeah, it'll come. Okay. And then how do I, do I have to pull in here? No, 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 no. She can hear? Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, my camera is being rude. Um, I'm making a turn, so give me one second. Okay. Please don't crash. Thanks for accepting me. Of course, don't crash. What's your name? <laughs> um, Janae from Chicago. Hi. Hi, you guys are beautiful as always. Well, thanks, Thank you. Bro. So are you. I've listened to you guys for like a couple years now. <laughs> Thank you. I've listened to you guys for like a couple years now, and 
I decided to make a grocery store run, and I was like, fuck, they're going live, I hope. <laughs> it's like trying to snow here, so I, I was like, hopefully the connection isn't bad. Where are you? Um, in Chicago, I'm driving towards like the Beverly area, which is south side of Chicago, um, to Mariano's. I don't know the equivalent there. I want to say it's Rouse, maybe. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Because I have family that used to, well, I have family in Bakersfield, but um, I had an aunt that used to live on Magnificent Mile. Girl, I don't know what you're talking about. Girl, I don't know where Magnificent Mile is, boo. <laughs> <laughs> What's your advice question? What's your name? Um, Janae. Oh, Janae, right. What's your advice question, Janae? So I am really like going through it as far as making a huge life decision, and I need your advice. Um, so my background has always been in like the business side of healthcare, but I've also done like production stuff, like production assistant, camera work, stuff like that. And um, so even though our mayor sucks, they launched this, uh, like, film uh, workshop. And they didn't pick me. I wanted to be in the camera department, and they didn't pick me. And I was devastated about it because it's something I really wanted. Um, to. I don't do monotony very well as far as schedule. Um, so I'm kind of at a cross because we're still in this pandemic bullshit and I'm just like trying to figure out, okay, should I go back to old faithful and work a healthcare job and, you know, see if what the hell happens in five years with the world or should I just try to be creative and figure shit out on the creative side on my own? Well, you know what we're going to tell I you, know. girl. That's like a girl. <clears throat> What's I going? mean, what? okay. Do you feel like you're in a position financially that you can, you'll have, like, that you could be okay for a second so that you could do that? Or is this, are you risking it all? Is this a risk it, risk it all decision? It is a risk it all. I guess that's the part I should have mentioned. Like, um, when I left my job in August, um, I was like the standard six, seven months out as far as savings or whatever. But now it's getting tight. <laughs> so I'm just like, mm, do I want to just make a few phone calls and say, hey, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it. Like, I'll be good this month. But next month, I'm like trying to figure out where my money is going to come from. And I'm actually fighting with a client right now um, about my check. It's been a month since I worked for them. And um, so I'm just like, do I want to kind of mess with my finances right now or do I just want to make sure that I have money for my bills next month and moving forward until the season for production stuff picks up? Okay. I think <clears throat> you may want to take maybe a part-time job. On some old faithful, I, this is what I know. This is my trade. This is definitely going to have a check type shit. And in the meantime, you need to actively be, I mean, like, I, are you a mom? You, you're a mom? No. Oh, well, I Girl, mean, I'll do it. it. Yeah, you good, that's why you just do it. Just do whatever you want. Yeah, live your life. Live on a couple of couches. You you'll figure it out. A cup of noodles. <laughs> shit. I mean, I feel, I feel like when you have to, like, do what you love. Be happy. You know, your happiness is important. And I think when you lead with that, everything else kind of gets taken care of at some point. I mean, obviously, you know what you have to do. But, like, I think there's I, hella jobs. If you needed a waitress for a cup for a part-time at night, that shit is always available. I did it for many years. It made much money and met a lot of people. So, like... I think you just have to also just like ask yourself a few questions. Am I really ready to like embark on this? Am I, am I willing to sacrifice? Am I like, you, you know, like, because obviously even choosing the creative journey, it's, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's, you know, but when you are living in your purpose and doing what you have to do, it doesn't matter. Because every time you show up for work, you're going to feel at, you're going to feel activated. You're going to feel ready to do it. And so, I mean, I'm a more like, I, I believe that you should follow your dreams. But I also, for me, like, I need a little bit of like, 
like the part time job situ- thing was is a crucial. Like I feel like you need to build like some stability so that you have the space to be creative. So yeah, you have so you the have space. Your, yeah, because if you're stressed you, in any in any job, either is if you make a lot of money or not. If you're stressed in any capacity, then it's not you're not going. You're gonna have stress. But it just depends what kind of stress you're trying to have. Like, yeah, survival stress. Do I have somewhere to go tomorrow stress? That's just a dire stress. That's on the high stress alert system. <laughs> but I think it will come to you and you, you know, and <clears throat> and all the moves will make sense in, in due time. Yeah. Can you like take a healthcare job that gives you a lot more flexibility? You know what I mean? Like only work part time and then the other part of the time you're dedicated to your art and that's your job. Well, I think it will work out, but good luck. And thank you for joining our show today. And we're sending you all the good energy for all the things that you want. Make a list, write it, write it, write it down, write it down. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 You have to hang up because we don't know how. Did you stay married because it's comfortable or divorce and find someone that you connect with? Do you stay married because it's comfortable or divorce and find someone to connect with? Girl, you know what we're going to say. <laughs> you need to get a fucking divorce. <laughs> Don't do anything because it's comfortable. If you're not happy, it's time to get the fuck on. Uh, we have it. Oh, Willie Jones. I hope he asked the question. <laughs> Is it... He's so cute. Hi. Hey. You're so fine. You're so fine. Damn, you're fine. Damn. Looking all cute in your orange beanie. Good morning. Where are you? Are you back in Nashville? I'm back in Los Angeles. I got out here yesterday. Oh, shit. Come on. Hey. What are you doing tonight? Meet us in Hollywood. We're going to DM you our locations. <laughs> So what's up? What you doing? What do you do? You have any? Do you have any questions for us? Or are you just chilling with us? I was just chilling, but so what? So I had to get off real quick. Um, so I missed the first advice. So give me a rundown on just a quick little cliff notes on what what y'all have talked about so far. I mean, we talk about you know just uh, whether, how to break up with someone, how to break up with someone. If you're, should you stay in a relationship and stay married just because you're comfortable, <laughs> or should you move on and find someone else? It sounds like you might need to find yourself before you move on and find someone else. How do you break up with someone? I want to ask a man. How do how how have you broken up with women in the past? Is it like oh in the oh in the past has been very embarrassing. <laughs> Well, my first breakup was like, it was high school. She was like my high school sweetheart. And she moved away. And it was just, it was in high school. And yeah, and I just called her on the phone. And I was like, you know, I love you. And we've been together for all these years. And I'll always be here for you. But this ain't working out. Mm. And then she was like, and, but she, and she was real quiet at the time. She had just moved. And she was like, well, who's going to be my friend? And I was like. I'll still be your friend. <laughs> and then another another time, it was bad. I just I just got really I was just in my head like towards the end of the relationship, and I just started to shrink myself, man. And like I just went, I was just in my head about everything, so I like shut down. So I really did not communicate a word to her. She just was like, "Hey, what's going on?" And I just couldn't speak for like an hour. And she was like. Do you want to break up with me? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Not just do you want to break up with me. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, actually, yeah, I do. <laughs> and I, never again. Now I like to communicate and talk, and I don't like to leave motherfuckers with, like, questions, especially when it's, like, disturbing a peace, and I'm like, I can offer you some kind of peace. I like to communicate now because that's just the easiest 
thing for me because if I hold stuff in, my I, I start to forget how to dress. I forget not how to dress. It's true. It'll fuck up your whole <laughs> swag. It fucks all your shit up. Like, <laughs> I lose my shit. like I lose myself when I don't tell my truth. So <clears throat> now I just gotta tell it like it is. Willie, what's your sign again? I'm a Libra. Libra, the yes, the beauty, the sign of beauty. Oh, oh, a cusp Libra. Mm. A cusper. I'm a cusper. I, I prefer cuspers. I'm can't not I'm, prefer cuspers. That's so specific, bitch. I do. That's not even fair. Most people are You're not cusp. cuspers. I know, but like <laughs> here we are, bitch. There's so many numbers in between there. Sorry, I you land really on the fifteenth, like, no about thanks. nineteen to twenty-five. <laughs> I'm I'm a Cancer Gemini cusp. Okay. I have a question. Um, and this is something that has just been coming up in my life in random conversations here and there. What are our thoughts on polygamy? Um, I don't want to fuck this up. Polygamy is generally when the man only has multiple wives, correct? Uh, I don't know. I don't or is it when both parties... Are you, are you asking about polyamory or polygamy? No, they're two not, different things. No, I think it's different. I think I think polyg. I'm, mm. I'm pretty sure polygamy is when the man has, has multiple, multiple wives, wives, but polyamory is when you're just sharing in love with a lot of people in one space. Basically, like either you guys live in the same home. You don't have to, but free love. Okay, so that's like <laughs> when. Okay, so that's when everybody can just do their thing, but it's like a mutual understanding there. So. Hmm. Okay, that's cute. <clears throat> Do you like that? Is that what you want? Uh, I, I don't know for sure if that's what I want. But Do like, you I'm wish that you could... Do you prefer to be in a relationship where you can have more than one girl? Like, if that was... If it was your dream situation, like, are you someone that would prefer to have, like, more than one girlfriend? Uh, no. Well, where I'm at right now, uh, one is all I can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Willpower, to, uh, <laughs> yeah, but one, but I've never, I've never dated two, but one of my best friends, um, we've been friends for years, and um, he came to visit me in Nashville, and he was asking, like, he was like, how much room you got, and I was like, yeah, I got a two-bedroom, you know what I'm saying, it got a mattress and yeah, yeah, he was like, how big is the bed, I was like, it's a blow-up mattress, uh, yeah, he was like, okay, because, uh, he was like, remember what I told you in high school what I was going to be on? And I was like, you got two bitches? He was like, bro, I got two. And I was like, that's awesome. And the girl that he was with, his main girl, he'd been with for like six years. So, like, they bringing this new girl in. And, um, yeah, they were doing the damn thing. But then I seen them break up with it at my house. They both broke up with it. Damn. That's <laughs> awkward. At your house, though? My house. <laughs> out my house. On New Year's Eve. Oh, no. And I already didn't really like the girl. Like, <laughs> I was like, she's cool, but it's something about her. So when they was when they was kicking her out, I was just sitting at the door like, <laughs> none of my business. Mind your business. Oh, so. Thank you. I saw him, like, kind of do it, and it looked like it, it was working. Um, until she got beside herself. And it was cool to see them both, like, mutually agree, like, that it wasn't what they, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't just him being like, I don't fuck with this girl no more. It was them both. Uh, yeah, it was How cool. devastating for her. <laughs> she lost both. And then, <laughs> and, then they drove back to, and then they drove back to Louisiana, and they... And they sit in the back seat while she drove. Oh no, that's terrible. She drove them. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Because she said she said they was about to leave, and then he came up to me, and they came for New Year's. He was like, "Hey, bro, I'm sorry, we got to cut the trip short." And I was like, "What's going on?" He was like, "Man, this shit ain't cut out for everybody." I was like, "What happened?" <laughs> and then they started breaking up with it. He was like, "No, nah, she about to drive us home." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> well, I think that Eric and I are like our our thoughts on polyamory are you know whatever floats your boat. I think it is difficult. I think it's difficult either way because let's admit like humans be cheating and lying and shit. And I would prefer not that. Whatever I would prefer is not the lying and shit. Okay, if you gonna fuck somebody else, please tell me. I I'd rather know. Let's be in this together versus apart. 
Yeah, they're right. And I learned that shit. Um, yeah, I, I learned that shit. Um, because, yeah, I was unfaithful in a relationship with somebody who I loved and still love. And, yeah, got caught. Literally the next day got caught. What made you cheat? She said, I've been, been praying to my ancestors, nigga. I knew it. <laughs> You don't need to play with her. She don't sound like a woman you want to play with. Don't fuck with a woke woman, okay? She did all this work, like, literally the day before. She did all this work and had these people in L.A. praying over her, and she took this bath and all this shit. And I went out of town, and literally the next day, the next morning, she said, what you was that? Why you calling me from your car? I said, oh, I'm just, and she was like, so your red receipts was on last night. I was like, oh. She done caught yeah, you, nigga. She got that phone. She caught yeah, you. So you, she caught me, kid. And I can't lie. And yeah, I was just caught. And so why did you I cheat? Said, Don't hurt yourself. Huh? Why did you cheat? You love her. Why'd you cheat? Um, I was just, I was, I was weak at the moment. <laughs> I'm not. I know. I know. I'm not. I'm not blaming it on this, but I was drunk, and it was my first time drinking in a while. And it was, like, my first, like, big trip as far as, like, my label shit goes. And, yeah, I was throwing up in the toilet, bro. And then this little, uh, this gal just just came in. and Started kissing you after you threw up? She was like, hey, just come lay down in my bed. It's totally fine. Oh, she, she prayed, prayed, she you. prayed upon you. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? She's a predator. You need to be careful of her. She, I'm done with her. That's a whole nother story. Too. <laughs> a little kiki. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about tonight. She really did on some shit. And, and I got caught up and literally the next day I was caught. And it was like a rap from there. And I was just so fucked up for like a year after that shit. Because it put into question like who I was and like what I, who, the type of man that I say I want to be. Because I was talking about moving in with this girl and all of this. And then I went off and did that. And even though I got caught, and after the fact, she was like, you know, you could have cheated. You could have just told me, and you did. We always say that. that. It's we true. You through that, but I, because I was so ashamed, I, like, hid myself from the world. Mm. And, uh, man, Beyonce say, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> when you hurt me, you hurt yourself. Ooh. Ooh. A word. Well, she had that spiritual bath, nigga. She put some shit on you. She was like, oh, you gonna feel this pain. Don't fuck with no woman in touch with her ancestors because the uh, ancestors gonna tell on your ass and whisper right in her ear and tell her where you're at. Fuck with y'all like that ever again. I'll fuck with y'all, but I ain't gonna fuck with y'all. Like, fuck with y'all. I bet you won't. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Uh, yeah, man, don't hurt yourself, fellas. Well, thank you for that wonderful advice. And uh, if you guys check out Willie Jones, he's like an amazing musician, amazing country singer out of Nashville. Y'all rock with country music. Yes, country music. Black folks do do it. We've been doing it since the beginning. It's like everything. And uh, yeah, I live in Nashville. I got new music out. Check it out. It's positive. It's good. You can dance to it. You can play it in front of your grandma and your kids. Oh, okay. We gotta get the kids on Willie. We gotta. Oh, do we, can we use can we use Willie to like outro this episode? Can we can we use one of your songs, Willie? Oh yes, you so food. Okay. Okay. And look, now we got tell the record label we got permission from you, so they don't better not come for us. Yeah. We'll use it. Okay. You know, they got permission. Hey, Sony, they got permission from me. And if y'all fuck with me, that's another story. <laughs> But don't fuck with them. Like, <laughs> All right, we got it recorded. So, uh-huh. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right, Willie, we'll see you yeah, tonight. Yeah. We're gonna hit you up tonight. Hell yeah, 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 hit me up. Okay, bye, bye boo. You have to hang out. I don't, I don't know. know. End the live. Just exit Instagram. I'll just exit the whole thing. Okay, yeah, exit thank the whole you. Shit. Well, I love Willie. <laughs> I love him too. What a nice guy. When I met him, I just was like immediately like drawn to him yeah and we just started talking like straight up had the deepest conversation like right off the bat i remember i, I, I was, was in the corner and y'all were over there and i was like me and him were like yeah i know i was like are you sure mm. <laughs> i know you're like come here come here look at this picture <laughs> <laughs> um i think we have some more advice questions let's see let's see um mm. 
focusing on being a better you before you can be a better parent slash partner. I mean, you'd said it. You got to focus on being a better you before you could like, you know, it's an all fluid experience. You got to do it all at the same time, low key, because you can't be a better parent or partner if you're not a good, a better person. Um, how do you keep it together if you're constantly ridiculed for something you didn't choose but just happens, like a pregnancy and a DNA test? What? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> wait, okay. is that what it says at the end? Yeah. Wait, okay. So you say it again? <laughs> how do you keep it together when you're constantly ridiculed for something you didn't choose but just happens, like a pregnancy and a DNA test? Oh, like someone's po- constantly rid- ridiculing you by having t- about having to by, about getting pregnant and having to get a DNA test? I mean, shit happens, boo. That's fuck them. I mean, literally. At least you got the DNA test. Some bitches just be like, it's you. <laughs> Well, you know, like you're welcome. I was, I kept it real, and now you should shut the fuck up about the being ridiculed. Because, Science said it was you, boo. I mean, what do you want from me? It's just this is what happened, and this is the result of what happened. And beat it if you can't get with it because it's already happened, right? Um, and I guarantee you, you are not the first or the last bitch that this has happened to. No scam likely. Um. I have no advice on homeschooling because I'm not, not a great teacher. I figured that out during the Zoom the days. This, I can't help. Mm-mm. A Libra woman and a Gemini woman relationship combo. I'm a cancer. Uh, I'm a Gemini Cancer. I once dated a Libra woman. Very intense. Didn't last long. We are very good friends though. <laughs> um, do we have any requests? Okay, I th- where are the requests? Oh, I, the question mark. I did there were questions there. I was just reading them. Oh, those. That, that's it. Um, how can I build my confidence? I think I'm doing it right. Then I feel like I'm not. Well, that's, that's the confidence journey. (laughs) That's the confidence journey. It's, you feel like you're getting ahead and then you take a few steps back and then you have to get there because you still haven't healed from there. And then you heal that part and then you move forward and go back. And it's just like, until one day you wake up and finally that part is healed. This one is, have either one of you ever had an abortion and what was your experience if you have? Uh, yes, for sure. I've exercised my right to have abortion, plural. And, um, I think it was more difficult having an abortion after having a baby because when you're like young and you've never gone to the end, you're like, ixnay on that baby a and you can just keep moving and it's fine i mean i was like when i was in high school i was very emo and dramatic so it was the best thing for sure but i was sad and then you know after having a whole human and giving birth and going through the entire experience it is more difficult because you're more understanding of the life that's growing inside of you and then you can look at your child and you're like oh shit you could be a human and I'm cutting you short. But overall, um, I think you still, I think it's safe. It's been done millions of times. Get put to sleep. And that pill is not great. Do the regular way. <clears throat> I've only, I, I took the pill and it was not, it was so painful. Really? Yeah, it was not. But honestly, I mean, the, I, I think don't... if you're very early on, the pill is more is more is easier. But I think, you know, if it's, it's been a minute, like, I think you should just go get the shit done, get it out the way, keep it pushing because it like drags it out. You're like sitting there for weeks. I would say also, like, you don't don't. I don't know. I'm not an abortion expert, but I would say like, don't do it alone. Like, I would rather have like a friend there with me. I mean, to, like have a friend pick you up. No one can be with you. Yeah. Usually. But I just mean like you don't have to go through it alone. Yeah. I think it's more normal than I think obviously is, you know, publicized. But I think that um, try to be amongst someone that you love when you go through some, something like that. For some people, it's very like whatever. It doesn't matter. And then for some people, it hits them differently. I mean, you just never really know how it's going to affect you. Someone said they took the pill and they have a son, so they don't recommend it. <laughs> Um, I also think like it's a hard thing to do, but if you know it's the right thing to do and like if there's no real like it's not the time. It's Follow a, your intuition. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. And like, don't judge yourself for it. It's your right. Amen. Ladies, if you go get an abortion and the establishment is not making sure you have a good support system, go somewhere else. I mean, I've been to establishments that were like, you got a right. And they make sure someone comes to get you, but they don't care if they're supportive. Right. 
Um, so I guess that's really good advice. Or just, yeah, at least have a friend or someone you trust. Yeah. Um, another question is... Okay, so there's the how to help my child to the sorrow, sorrow of her forming of her father forming a new family with a wife and a kid. She is devastated. Hmm. I wonder how old she is. She might be a little bit older, or hmm, who knows? But that's a really tough one. Um, especially if you are also going through it too. Could you imagine, like, trying to else? be there for your kid and also? I mean, <clears throat> you haven't you haven't really experienced the whole thing, but like. I mean, a sibling. I, yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I've in my situation, my ex now has two kids with with two different women, um, which was a, the first one was a complete shock, and the second one was pretty much a shock as well. Um, we weren't together anymore, but it doesn't. It, I would it'd be a lie if I said it didn't terribly affect me, you know, and devastate me in a way, especially when you are like the first baby mama, and you kind of I don't know there's like this hierarchy there's this like I'm the first we've shared this thing together this first together we shared like we intentionally made this child together like that when it's when you're no longer alone on that island it feels triggering it feels egotistical it feels like someone has stabbed you in the fucking heart and ripped it out (laughs) pretty much um, snatch your crown. <laughs> I'm totally fine, guys. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I know, I, know. I am, I am. Um, but it took me a long time to say that and be and say I am, you know. But for my daughter, I mean, I didn't really experience that. She was actually excited about it. She didn't really have a concept of what it meant because honestly, she doesn't remember us together. So it was just like daddy was having, you know, another baby. I think she always wants us, wanted, like, she feels the love that we've shared because I think it's just innately part of her. Um, but she was excited. So I don't, I think, like, I think the way, if it wasn't that way, it would have to really be a lot of reassuring of, like, that we're still a family. It would have to be a lot of conversations with him about like making her feel supported it would really I don't know like I would take it as an opportunity to talk to him and his new woman or even if I mean even therapists like therapists offer uh, support for family therapy in ways that are not just like we're a happy family but there are ways to like you know include you know for sure therapy is crucial but I think also like the family has to be has to support her yeah I still support her. And if they don't, I mean, I, I would say don't try and overly, overly compensate with like material things. I think sometimes parents do that. If, if, if like one parent is missing or something is there in order to fill that void, they like give a lot of shit. And I think sometimes it's just like offering the uh, conversation. How are you feeling? Checking in with them, giving them the opportunity to talk about it and let them know that their feelings are justified and OK. And also honestly like I know we want to protect our kids from everything but this is real life shit and she's going to have to like sometimes real life shit hits early sometimes it happens sooner than we want It that's life you know and I mean obviously support her and do all those things but also she has to understand too like this is life and things will things change and maybe there's beauty in it too like i don't know if, <clears throat> i don't know what the situation is on the other side um but i think it's just it's life essentially yeah um that remind that there's another question about uh someone how how long should you wait to introduce your kid to someone you're dating she said she her daughter loves her dad so much and she thinks she'll be shady and i mean like that's another thing like it's life it's not super calculated unfortunately there's no like universal age that makes it like or time six weeks six months you know that is a perfect time to introduce someone i think i think sometimes people wait too long and then you fuck around they don't like each other at all and you're like damn it's not gonna work (laughs) i mean do you have male friends because Essentially, that's what this person is, is coming around to, you know, and not immediately just, hey, this is mommy's boyfriend all of a sudden. Like you ease into that. You build the trust that she needs to know. Oh, this is someone that my mom can rely on. Oh, this is my mom's friend. Okay, cool. And hopefully that, you know, you get to that point. 
So I think that's another thing is like not, and I mean, me, me and Mila have talked about this a lot, like not having like this Prince Charming come in out of no fucking where and it being like a Disney movie. Like, like this is my mommy's man now. And like, yeah. Like, like mommy's it, allowed to have male friends. Mommy's allowed to have male friends around my daughter. You know what I mean? Like we se- often separate and villainize men as like these things. We predators. To, yeah. And it's like. Like it automatically every man is a predator. And that is not to say that you need there to are have not some. That's not to say that everyone needs to meet my child okay no it's not to say that but i think that we need to normalize our kids and our our kids seeing us <laughs> just in different spaces with different people and sometimes that includes like male friends and i'm sure that you have your kid around male friends but you just don't associate it that way because you're not fucking them and like i introduced my kid to like two guys i dated in the last two years and um, she liked them both a lot. And, you know, I had an I had a weird part, like epiphany the other day when I was like in the car and I was like, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful for those two guys for like the role they played in her life. And like, even though it didn't work out on both like occasions and we don't talk and whatever, but like they were really kind to her. They each taught her different things. You know, like one was like, like very interactive and took us like camping and shit. And like, that was really a good like experience for her. The other one like spoiled her a lot. And like, I think she understood like how it felt to be spoiled by a man. And I appreciate that. Like I thought I I was at the end of the day, despite like how those things ended, which I wish, I wish, I don't wish that we could still be friends so that they could maintain a a friendship. That's the only thing it's like, I've also had to teach her. I love them and they were cool but sometimes friendships end and it's okay and I still love them we just don't talk because like that is it just doesn't work out that way you know sometimes you grow out of friendships and that's been a cool like not a cool lesson to teach but it's also a necessary one and had someone maybe taken more time to teach me that I would probably have less psycho attachment issues and want to (laughs) keep people forever and have a like, please stay. Don't you love me? So I think it could be an opportunity and it's, you're the mom and you know how close you are with that person and you know when it's time and you need to trust that. Amen. <clears> Hi, <throat> okay, anyone want a video request? I don't see any more video requests. Um, there's some more advice questions though. Um, Girl, how do you sort your mind and not get overwhelmed when you have a lot you need to do Tori how do you what sort your mind when you're overwhelmed to have a lot but you got shit to do yeah and you have and you have when you have a lot you need to do go for a walk post-its yeah post-its and then pre- like what is priority go for a walk put your feet in the grass <laughs> immediately and yeah ground also sometimes just call it <laughs> call it a motherfucking day you can't win them all Okay, Pearly B, I'll give you a moment. Um, let's read another one. Um, oh my God, peep! Someone said a planner. I've never been able to use a planner. I lose them. I have like twelve. I can't. Do this. I have twelve notebooks and twelve planners, all with separate notes that make no sense. <laughs> I'm in therapy, but my parents also need it. How do I encourage them to get help and tell them in therapy without offending them? Mm. Mm. Oh, girl, and on. not everybody's gonna go on the therapy journey with you, boo. Like you can, like obviously you can. What you could do is if you could try uh, invite them to your therapy session first. Um, maybe say like make them feel like you're bringing them in to like you know talk to them about something, and then you know take it from there. But honestly, like not everyone's gonna be on with therapy, especially I feel like honest. Unfortunately, like. The older older people, they yeah. don't want to talk about their business. Yeah, Sunny also asked that kind of goes with this question is Hi, Sunny. Um, how to start repairing a relationship with your mother who plays the victim all the time? Mm. Mm, my mom plays a lot of victims, but um, you know, it's really about being patient, being patient and like dabbing in, seeing if she how ready she is. If if you ain't, I'm 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 kind of ducking out. You just kind of like. Where are you right now? And, you know, me and my mom are in a good place and I'm happy. But, like, I, I understand the um, irritation with that. In fact, some so crazy. She does play the victim all the time. And she did something a couple weeks ago that was, like, some shit. And she was, like, 
defensive and she was like you don't need to yell at me and i i had this epic opportunity to shift the like generally how she is like the thing and i was like it's okay i was like it's okay we all fuck up i fuck up this was an epic fuck up so she couldn't not not be responsible it was like the only she was the only person <laughs> responsible <laughs> there's no one else to deflect on but her so she was like she got quiet and I was like, it's okay. We all fuck up. I'm like, I fuck up. It's all good. I'm not getting on you. I'm like, but it happened. Like, let's figure it out. What do you think is next? (laughs) You know, like, what do you think? Like, I don't know. This is, this is what could possibly happen, you know, like weighing out the options. But like, I was making sure for her to know, like, it's okay because I don't feel like I've gotten that grace from her a lot. And I felt like it was like a, um, an opportunity to lead by example almost. And an interesting show her like, this is how I want to be treated. Yeah. And Remember that time I did that, mom? Why? Can't, like, do that for me. Can you show? Yeah. So I was just like, calm. And it, it is difficult. Like, just the patience is a co- constant, like, exercise at exercising how much you can grow your patience. That was big of you. Wow. I don't know. I don't know if I had that in me. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to get that. I need to get that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a part of being a, a like, a, child as an adult is that you begin to especially in this generation you begin to parent your parents and you kind of realize that they're unhealed and that they've made mistakes because they don't know shit really you know just like we don't know shit like there there are our vessels are aging but like sometimes your mind doesn't necessarily evolve and Mm -hmm. like a lot of times you know if you're not pushing for that and like that and and you become kind of the parent and they're the child and it's kind of like understanding like taking away that um super mom super dad perspective and that you can be more forgiving and have more patience for them like you would for your kid because you realize they're just in those bodies it's true wow that was really deep but also what stuck with me when you said that was the pushing for it because i feel like even the most evolved people have to continue like pushing to to grasp more, to understand more. You know what I mean? So many people just stop or they don't even they're like, this is good enough. Like, oh, there's a lot going on. I'd rather not. Let's just like stay here. For it's a uncomfortable. While. Like it, yeah. it's it's I don't want to be different. Growth is so uncomfortable. It's so annoying. Because you get com- <laughs> you get comfortable in being angry. You get comfortable in being mad. You get comfortable in being at being defensive. You get comfortable taking things personally. Just like you get comfortable in being in a miserable marriage and not and blaming the other person instead of taking responsibility for your life and for your shit and from saying like I'm cool. Like you get comfortable in all of that sadness and the the not evolving and it's like both are hard though. Mm-hmm. But once you but I mean it's so worth it but it's just it's not easy it's not easy to get over there no it's not oh someone said they love what these queens i love what y'all queens do i think we need more of it keep on going thank Thank you. you we going baby we going um should i tell my friend how to tell should I tell my friend how to tell her I've just been ignoring it, but he keeps progressing. They just got married last year after being together eleven years. Wait, I think I saw some of this story. This is not a full question. Oh wait, here it is. But this last year he started sending dick pics videos of him jerking off on Snapchat. I tell my husband every time, but he acts dumb as if he doesn't know what he did. Wait, 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 what? Your what? friend's husband is sending you jerk off pictures? Your friend's husband and you're and you're you're married. She's married. She's married. She tells her husband. What? I think you need to join. I, I can't. I can't decode this, <laughs> Frederick. I but I do need to know. Um, so you want to start a podcast by yourself? Is there any advice? I would say listen to other solo podcasts. Podcasting alone is not easy. It takes a lot of motivation. So I would say definitely um, listen to some other solo podcasts. How do you deal with anxiety without putting the energy off on your kid? Whew. Girl. Take a I walk. I mean, you're not <laughs> going to you're not going to win them all. You're not going to win it all every time. You're going to fail a lot. <laughs> um, but the fact that you're even aware of it is step one. Because some people just have no self-awareness and are just constantly just being mean to their kids because they have anxiety and are stressed out. I mean, to be honest, like kids 
are super loud and annoying. And so it d- the noise level doesn't really help with the anxiety. But it is very healthy that you notice, like, this is my this is a personal problem. And actually, all this shit really doesn't need to get done right now. And actually, I need to just tend to my child and be kind and patient and sit, th- like, put my phone away. And, you know, at least you're realizing that you're doing it. And apologize. I think also what helps me in those moments is really just being present and knowing that this moment, that where we are right now, this age that she's in, this this innocence that she possesses I'm not one day I'm gonna wish I could be back here in this moment and wish I could have like done it better for her I know know? and then that gives me excitement because now she's off in the world not giving a fuck doing whatever the fuck she wants not calling me and she's in Europe fucking abroad in college and I don't know where she's at (laughs) and all I could wish was that I just would have paid attention to her when she was eight and wanted to fucking you know build a gingerbread house I know. I think about that all the time. I'm like, one day she's going to be like a teenager and I'm going to look up and I'm going to be like, oh my God, whatever I was working on on Instagram was not important. Mm -hmm. And it's not. And it's just like, yeah, I, I, that shit haunts me and that she's never going to be. And even looking at her now, I'm like, you're so tall. You're going to be bigger than me. You're so beautiful. Like who the, I don't know how she talks. And I'm like, (laughs) so that I always, I always think of this is the last time she's going to be this age at this time at this moment and like take every second of it. I never try and take any of it for granted. Also, weed. Weed. Also, weed. Weed is kind of crucial. If you don't smoke it, consider it. <laughs> or maybe eat it. Eat it, smoke it. Rub it on I you. don't know. Do the, do something. Supplements. Oh, my God. We finally got a video request. Not thank you, Erica. I don't want to repeat the cycle of me and my mom's Ronaldo. Who is Ronaldo? <laughs> okay, Pearly B. She done got cute for us. All right. She was like, give me a minute. She's like, hold on. Let me put my lip gloss on. <laughs> Hi, hey. boo. Hi, gorgeous ladies. How are you? Good. How are you, gorgeous? I'm good, girl. I'm on good mom. <laughs> hey, boo. <laughs> How are you? Is, um, do you have a do-rag on? Yes, it's my husband's. My curly, my curly frizz does not ever chill. <laughs> Let that frizz go, girl. Let the frizz flow. I know. And it's winter here, too. So it's, like, really bad in Canada. Don't even get me started about our winter. <laughs> I know. Meanwhile, my shoulders are out, and I'm wearing a neon pink dress as if it's fucking June. <laughs> Yo. And y'all be posting your, like, vacations and your life in L.A. I'm just like. <laughs> well, we need to come crazy. out to Canada. I love Canada. Where in Canada I- are you? I'm in Ottawa. It's like the capital of Canada, but um, it's like close to Toronto, Montreal. I, I always say that because nobody in the states knows where Ottawa is. I've heard of Ottawa. I have heard of Ottawa. Yeah, I think I've I, I think I've actually been there. I couldn't name it on a map. I've but been, I I've actually been there before. It, they make it easy for you on a map, actually, Mila, because Ottawa is like there's a star on it because it's the capital of Canada. So mm. that's where I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm obviously, like, naturally co-signing everything you girls are saying, but, like, I really want to talk about, even, like, with self-awareness and just, like, awareness of, like, human beings and yourself and life, why do friendship breakups still fucking hit, even as you get older? I'm, like, in my 30s, and anytime it happens, even though deep down I'm like, I knew it about this bitch, I just knew it. (laughs) It's still, like... I don't know. It hurts. That shit hurts harder than like, you know, intimate breakups with like people you're romantic with. I think because first of all, it doesn't matter how fucking self-aware evolved any of that shit. Like you still have feelings, you know, everybody has feelings and you have to feel them. That's why they're called feelings. There's nothing like that means you. I, someone told me like that means you're human. You know, if you stop feeling shit, then what the fuck? Like, then you're some fucking sociopath. So I just, I think you put, especially when you're a loyal ass friend, like these two water bitches sitting up here, like when you really love people, I think it does sting. You're like, damn, I really fucked with that person. I really gave them my loyalty. I really did these things. And so it's like the fucking audacity. Erica just had a falling out with a friend recently as a 30 something year old. How did 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 I? Yeah. When? Recently? Like, oh, I'm like, wait, hold on. (laughs) You know what? That shit did really hurt and piss me off. You know why I think it is? It was just, as you're asking this question, I was like, oh my God, this is, is this only, okay. 
I don't want to say this is true for me, but it is a little bit true. Is it because we expect men to leave? Whereas like, like romantic partners we expect to expire, but friendships we like hold in this other regard where like yeah. when it does, we're like, what the fuck? Like you're not, you're not supposed to leave. Like I'm not even yeah, fucking right. you. I don't know. Um, I feel it's weird too. I feel it's weird too, depending on the friendship, right? Not weird, but like in my, my friendships, I like to like, pursue it and treat it the same way I would like an intimate relationship you know what I mean like the same importance the same love on different levels obviously so it just like hurts extra it just hurts extra and I find too when you're older people can be shystier so like you would think it's like a breakup and it's done whatever but then like you know they're going out of their way to be friends with your friends now and like they're popping up where you popping up and it's like i've like been crying over you for days girl like and you're just trying so hard to like be close to the people that i'm close with so like you know what i mean so anyways that's like my thing lately is like my my younger cousin was telling me about this like bad friendship breakup she had and i was like girl i wish i could tell you it gets better but it actually gets worse. You get <laughs> wait so, i didn't like, realize is this a real is this an, like an epidemic that's happening like <laughs> i don't know yeah. i think i don't know i haven't had that many friendship breakups i think like i don't really i don't maybe you are more of a friendly bitch than i am and i have lots of friends but i i don't i generally have like my my friends i've of course i've made friends throughout even throughout this the, our journey in podcasting but i don't know i haven't had that many friendship breakups i had one recently which was a, but i kind of knew that was coming and i know the type of bitch she was you know you always do you are, yeah i know the type of bitch she was it didn't make me i was pissed but usually you know what usually the thing is being self aware and being older is that when it happens, you're just like, yeah, that, that bit, like, you do know. Like, yeah. even I, like prior to uh, the beginning of me and Erica starting this podcast, I had a pretty close friend who I, we had a broke, I, I had two close friends that I broke up with, <laughs> that I broke up with during our podcast period. And with both of them, I knew they're both kind of fucking crazy. So it's like, I think about them and I'm like, oh, I don't know, like, those bitches are crazy. Like, they, that, it wasn't, I knew that it probably didn't have longevity because I was, as you progress in a friendship, you inevitably see people more clearly. They start to show their true colors, you know? And as a, a grown woman, you're like, that is not a gro how a grown woman should act. Right. And so you kind of know who's not going to last. And like, even the ones that you didn't see it coming, it's like when they do show their ass, If I think if you're a woman and you decide to cut off a friend, it's generally for a very good reason and you got to honor yourself and be like all right bitch a little tear tear but keep it pushing because I, I have real friends i actually have friends that i fuck with that i've kept for a long time so i know it's not like it's just not it's, it's not for me yeah yeah i don't want it to be a problem for me i feel that it's just like something that came up for me recently and i'm like seriously like i don't even have time to grieve this right now i'm just so busy like i'm a mom like what and then it's worse when your friends are kids too it's just a whole thing and i'm like really like but like you said, like people show their ass, see the signs. And I used to be like that too. Like I had the, one of the friends who was a little bitch. Our kids were friends, and they did all these fun things together. But thankfully, my baby daddy maintained that friendship, and I don't have to. But like I had, I had to, I had to release that too. Like I'm sorry, I can't, I can't fucking help your friendship because we're not friends anymore. My bad. <laughs> like can't do it. Sorry, my piece is more important than yours. I make the rules. You don't have a car. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. No, I appreciate y'all feedback. Like, obviously, like, I'm good and stuff, but it's always just some shit that is at the back of my mind. And, like, this person pops up and it's just like, why are friendship breakups the fucking worst? Because they hurt, just like regular breakups. It's just loving people and then de uncoupling from them is is hard because you're in routine and you're used to calling them every day or every other day texting them. There's things you you start to do together. It's more about breaking the routine, honestly because the time away eventually the time separates you any fucking way this is also like advice like i would take for a relationship even though i'm married you know like just apply that same shit to everybody just the same way i love my friends the same way i would like a romantic partner you know like you show up for your friends like that just it happens you cook for them you clean for them you wipe their ass if they get a bbl like <laughs> True. You're a good friend. You are wow. a good friend. Wow. If I ever get that, I'm calling you. Okay, bitch? I'll I'm going to heal I'm, in listen, Ottawa. I'm coming to Ottawa to get my BBL. <laughs> I found a great BBL doctor. 
You know what? I might as well just do the BBL myself too. I'll give you guys a discount. <laughs> oh my god! Are you a surgeon? <laughs> No, no, no. Oh my God. She's like, well, speaking like, of which, I, I, like, I, looked, I literally I have a whole group chat happening today about BBLs, like happening in my phone currently, real time while we've the been on here. LA People are ever, sending like, doctors. It's only, only 10,000. My friend is like, this is the ass I want. Well, oh, well, I'm, I'm, gonna re- I'm already researching Texas and Houston and Mexico. No, wait. At first, it, first, it started out as a workout, like motivation. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, let's start, I want this ass. Yeah, let's go to the stairs. And then I don't know also, where the went, doctor came in. It went in. from like, meet me on this hike to let's just get asses. Let's just buy asses <laughs> it's so funny it's the, you know what it was an intense incline to from working out to bbl but canadians <laughs> are scared to get that for the most part so they do like the cupping you know like the suction that uh, makes how long does that scared. last that's only last like a what one know, hour but i don't know but i've seen like the results right after and it takes a few weeks to heal and honestly it looks terrible like, <laughs> what's the point? i feel like it's not good for your blood vessels <laughs> that can't be healthy that can't be I mean, I don't think either are like, neither are great. Our, yeah, we need to be proud of our our little butts, medium butts, like all the booties. Just get a little jiggle in it if you can, even if it's flat, and like call it a day. Shake something. Do some squats, whatever. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is the body you got. You know, take care of it, love it. You know, yeah, I agree. I think I across all like spectrums, I think that's generally what it should be. If this is how you got here, you should probably keep it. Exactly. I agree, but also I have fake boobs. So I was like, I agree, but also my tits are fake. I was gonna say so. minus boobs. Everything you have, you should keep, unless it's just boobs. Because my are- tits are not real, but everyone else be natural. <laughs> but your tits are not real. They look so real. Thanks. They do look. They look good. I'm like talking like I know you guys in person. Um, no, but I, I think do it. I think I agree that we need to normalize just being comfortable with who the fuck we are. But I also agree with do whatever the fuck you want. But also, don't be mad when I make fun of you because you look fucking ridiculous. Looks like a Christmas ham. Like just, camp. just you know, go at your own risk. That's all I'm gonna say. In all, in yeah. all ways. <laughs> I don't agree with those little ass thighs and those big dumb diaper booties. We at least <laughs> proportion them, bitches. Come on, tell the doctor to proportion the hips to the ass, or else you're gonna look dumb. It's gonna look like a Christmas yeah. turkey. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, and also I see a lot of like younger girls get it, which is fine. Like, you know, do you, but you don't realize how much your hormones change as you like leave your 20s and get into your 30s. And like, I swear to God, like your hips get bigger, your your titties get bigger. Like sometimes it happens. So just wait. Just wait a second. Just wait a second. Wait till 35 to get that. Grow into your regular body at, to full to full capacity and then decide if you need to tweak it a little. Exactly. You heard it here first on Good Moms. Amen. And the next episode will be sponsored by some doctor. <laughs> and then suddenly we'll so all, if we'll, you are, we'll, if we'll you are over the age of like... thirty one. <laughs> <laughs> we could never get like rich and famous and decide to get a bunch of shit done. So the people be like, "Remember this day?" And you're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> I wanted to get that big fat booty. I'm growing. Yeah. That was me then. I'm. This is me now. I've grown. <laughs> All like lifted. Listen, I wouldn't mind all that in a few years. But I'll let somebody else join. I love this so much. Thank you, ladies. And I'll keep listening in. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. Yes. And human. I got to come out to LA. I have a travel credit that I'm supposed to use. So. Okay, well, come on. Okay, come see us. Bye. Bye. This is fun. I know. Why have we don't ever do this? This we need to do this way more often. I know. How long has it been, David? Where are we at? Uh, we're like an hour and twelve minutes. Twelve okay. minutes? Okay, we'll take it. Thoughts, thoughts on marriage. Like, why would you want to get married? <laughs> Beats me. I mean, okay, the dress. The dress? I really want to I want the party. You can do that. I want the ring. I want the proposal. I want the party. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a church or anything. I don't need the piece of paper. But we can have like a ritual or a ceremony. I want to have free drinks and like a fancy dinner. And like I want elevated room events to like do it all nice and like have DJ Paris Paul. You know, I just need to have the party. You I like it. the party. So that's why you should have a wedding. I have a 14 year old boy who is growing through this pandemic it's so different to try to relate to him ideas mm. god i don't even know how i'm supposed to relate to a boy at a 14 year old boy in a pandemic 
That's tough. I think for sure get him into like other so, like social activities together. Like maybe try something new together for the first time. Something that he wants to do that he's into. Like fencing. I don't know why I thought of that. Fencing? <laughs> Is that the most delicate masculine <laughs> sport you could think of? I don't know, like fencing where it's violence, but it's classy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cla- classy <laughs> violence. You know, we both can get with it. Where there's I can weird drink outfits. a glass of wine before. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. I mean, what boy wouldn't do that? Okay, well, maybe like a the break room, break room, like breaking shit. There's those rooms where you can break shit all over. I think boys would like that. Race car driving, <laughs> risk your life. Basically, risk your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, skydiving. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what boy would be like? Yeah, I went skydiving with my mom. Get a tattoo. <laughs> oh, yeah, get a tattoo. <laughs> These are t- t- this is terrible. <laughs> Why would you ask for parenting advice? You know we're, we're not there yet. We're not 14. I don't know. I, we'll check back in in seven years. I thought those were good ideas. Maybe river rafting. Maybe just go on a trip. River raft. Go camping? Mm, I don't know what kind of mom you are. Are you, are you adventurer enough for that? Maybe teach him how to drive. Go take him and take him, teach him how to drive. Go like that be your thing. Like Maybe a road like, trip? Once a week you guys go and like drive in the parking lot somewhere where he can feel like you're giving your trust. You're, you're giving him his trust. You're spending time. He's feeling in control. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think that would be a good one. I was going to say something. Because I remember, so you know what it is? I was thinking, okay, I don't know what you're going to say. I shouldn't say it. Okay. Well, I was thinking about like my dad, like me and my dad, like how we, how one of the ways that we bonded was that like he would let me, we would go to Texas and he would let me go out into the field, like back country and shit and drive his truck. And I was probably like eight, seven or eight maybe. But like, it was fun for me. I felt like I was bonding. I felt like he trusted me and I trusted him and we were in this together. And it was like, obviously I was younger, but I still think even a 14 year old, like they're starting to feel like not starting. They've probably been feeling like they want to be independent. They want to feel like they are in control of their life in a way. And I think that could be cool. That's true. You feel like there's some independence in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do y'all struggle with having your baby daddy do things the way you do when he has the the child? I don't know if I'm a control freak, but it absolutely annoys me that he drops her back looking raggedy. Girl, yeah, that's, that's everywhere. Yeah, I like that hair, whatever. Like, you just got to just keep saying shit nicely, gently, but then let it go. No, too. it still pisses me off. I mean, soon they'll know how to take care of themselves. I've been tr- I tried. I've been trying to teach my daughter how to like brush her hair up into a ponytail because when I pick her up from school after a trade off of like him having her for the weekend and then being at school for like one or two days and then I get her I'm like is this what's been going on at school like poor baby so yeah I think if your child is old enough just giving them better tools but like they're also kids and she don't she still be looking crazy I don't know for me like I still get irritated by it because I'm like you wash your ass and make sure the boogers are out your eyes in the morning. Right, right. <laughs> you just forgot. Right. Yeah, it's very. I would curse about. Yeah, men are couple just, couple good curse outs. Men are just not really great. You kind of have to say it like the that. Details. You have to say it like that. Like, do you leave the house looking like that? Um, no, I they're don't. just they're not great with the details. They just really be like she's just so. Your kids are so beautiful. They just see this beautiful child in front of them. They didn't see all that hair and the gunk in their eyes and the fact that that's how they got dropped still off dirty. versus how they look right now yeah yeah um i saw another question earlier about covid if either of us had had covid and if so how would we um how did we could navigate co-parenting i did have covid when i had covid no one else had it i said come get her i didn't have no symptoms i was like come get her i'll let you know i'll call you in 10 days <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick. This last time, he, they he got COVID, dropped her off to me, and, the, and no, tell me he wasn't feeling well. Dropped her off, and then when he got positive, thought he she should stay with me, and then I got tested and I was negative, and I was like, nigga, if you if she is positive and you is positive, <laughs> you need to come get her before I get positive. He was like, parents don't get to not have their kids when they're positive, but this by this time his quarantine was almost over. He thought he was about to go the fuck outside. I said, the fuck you are. <laughs> I said, I can't afford to get positive, so come get her. I was like, Luna, I'm sorry. I love you. Don't kiss me. (laughs) I mean, but yeah, I think whoever has, who's ever positive, they need a group together. 
Yeah, I haven't had. To, yeah, I mean, but the truth is, if you're a true like not a true single parent, whatever, but like if you have no other option, you're gonna have to parent your kid while COVIDed or while they're COVIDed, and I'm sure everybody's gonna be just fine. It's you've been sick before and you've cared for your child and vice versa. So yeah, it's not great because we, me and Irie had COVID together, and there was like th- two days where where I was like in the room. I was like, girl, I'll be in here. Because she didn't have no symptoms. <laughs> I was like, you're going to watch this TV. Here's the water. Order food. Done. Bye. Um, but yeah, I haven't had to share the, the co-parenting thing. Because I think, I think when, he, when I had it, he was gone anyway. So it was just, it was just me. <laughs> okay. Nobody wants to join another call. Where the fuck is Frederic, Frederica with this epic story about her friend's husband? <laughs> That shit is crazy. What a weirdo. Hi, ladies. What are your thoughts on single motherhood by choice? This is Miss Missy Kamala. I'm 34, financially stable, good support system from my family, but trash dating life. I have success. I have access to IVF, and I'm debating whether or not to go ahead with it. Mm. I think it's hard, right? Like... To me, 34 is not like you're not at the you're not at the last point of conception. You know, I know everybody's bodies work different and like some people get pregnant at 43. Some people stop get, like have trouble at 35. I think if you if everything's like working well and you don't have any reason like you've gone to the doctor, you have no reason to like worry. If you want a relationship with someone and for to have a, like a family together at some point, I think that I think you have some time to like, you know, hope that this trash dating life gets less trash. Um, that, this is just my advice because this is the advice I give my friends that are 34, the ones who are fucking freaking out that don't have any kids, but everybody knows their themselves and where they're at and what they want for their life. So I only, I always ask is like, okay, so say you have a baby and the baby's four and then you meet a guy that you like really like and love like i don't know i guess he'll just come come in and take you know take you both just like with how it works with me but like maybe he'll be like why didn't you wait <laughs> why didn't you wait so i could be here from the beginning i don't know i don't thinking about the other person yeah before. i don't know i would like him do what you want to do for yourself i mean if that's what you if you feel like you're ready right now and i don't know like i feel like that's a really personal choice that only you can really answer um i think that me, I agree with Mila that like you're you're I mean, obviously go to the doctor, do the things you need to do. But I think if if love is what you would prefer and that's kind of what you're hoping, hoping for, like then go freeze your eggs and keep dating. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like God, there's so much pressure on women to like feel like they 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 need to be parents too. I mean, not not specifically this person who wrote in because I'm you know I'm I'm sure that you you truly do, but I think often like it feels like you haven't. I feel like society makes you feel like you haven't completed your mission on earth <laughs> unless you've been, like been a mother of some sort. I, I, yeah, I, I, that's very true. I think a lot of women's. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of men, women's expectation of themselves to have families and to have children may have come from society and we don't even realize it because like that's the only way like most of the way we see women in any media format like grown women minus like sex in the city and the whole show was about Carrie finding a fucking man is about like you know like either you have a husband you have a boyfriend and you're going to have kids like at a certain age there's always this understanding that you're going to get knocked up and have a family and live happily ever after so I think there takes a lot of like exploring if like do you need it do you need that adoption auntie Traveling without (laughs) traveling at the drop of a dime without ever having to check in with anyone doing whatever the fuck you want every single moment of the day, not paying for two people eating all your food it being only your food and no one else can eat your food because it's your fucking food and no one is there to to take it. Um, No, loud, no loud noises. I mean, not to say if you're you're sick and like not feeling well, you have a headache and someone's like, you said you're gonna make me tea. You said you're gonna make me tea. You said you're gonna make me tea. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I need a snack. 
I mean, just really th- think about it. Think real long and hard about it. It sounds cute until it's here. And don't get me wrong. My daughter is like the, pr- the sole purpose of everything. It's the, she's the really the inspiration behind even just sitting here right now. But shit, just make sure you are ready. Um, cause yeah, especially alone. That is, there's no one else there. <sighs> I mean, hopefully someone else gets there, but you know what I'm saying. (laughs) What? Is the mom and son sexual connection real? I know there is an unbeakable bond, but it is, but is it rooted in sexual connection? It's been studied. Is, um, I'm just wondering your thoughts. Okay. The study that you're referring to, um, it is, I don't think it's a study of the, 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 the son and the mother having a sexual connection because they also compare it the other way with the daughter and the father. And it's a theory and it says that at a certain age, um, the child, the female child at like four wants to kill the mother and, uh, marry the dad. It's like so there's there is a con like this study like an older study of psychology what, that most most girls feel this way it's just I, I feel like it's a like a a standard that they put to to exemplify the intimacy in like and how we develop as children into adults just like you know you say you, you may date someone that's similar to your father it's just the the psychology around the first female relationship as a boy is generally the mother the first real intimate male relationship for a female child and vice versa is, is the father. And so um, these, you know, as a child, there's no, there's really, we don't understand fully the concept of like a romantic love, a sexual love or a platonic love. It's just love. So there's like an intimacy there. So I think that the, 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 obviously the psychology behind it has truth. I think it's like Sigmund Freud. I forgot whose study it is, but it's a pretty like, and it's a pretty like referred often referred to psychology study and obviously there's truth there um i'm trying to go- google it and all is coming up is why kids kill parents no. <laughs> like oh shit i'm trying to sound smart but i can't remember the fucking the, the, the fucking man who made this theory but um no there's definitely intimacy like there's a, a form of intimacy but it's obviously not i don't think it's sexual and i think as a child you don't understand the difference so it, the lines are blurred but there is no really sexuality because you're just a kid i, mean, I want when just i was like your kid like wanting to like su- like touch your tits all the time yeah i mean it's just like a form of intimacy and sensuality when i was five humping i thought i should kiss my dad with tongue because i saw my mom do it okay <laughs> I did. I didn't warn him. I was just like, in my mind, okay, so this this is the only thing I could think of because this is the true thoughts of my five-year-old self. And it was like, huh, maybe I should try that. I didn't say, let me should talk to him about it first. I was like, let me just try it and see, is that, was that what's supposed to happen? Because I saw it happen. It was just like trial and error. So I just was like, <laughs> and he was like, what are you doing? <laughs> no? No. Okay. No, okay. okay. Well, okay. Well, all right. So that's what I learned. It's also like I was five and I was like, huh, I wonder if hell is a bad word. And I wasn't sure. And instead of asking, I just said, what the hell are you doing? And they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and then I learned, you know, it's just like the, the theory of like learning and understanding. Well, well yeah, you intimacy as in, in the, as a form of a new human. You know, you're in this world and like there's these social constructs and these things of love and romance for obvious reasons. And, you know, you just don't really fully understand that concept as a child. And so you're just exploring love and intimacy in a in a rather innocent way. Mm hmm. Not that I ever tried to kiss my dad like that ever again. I'm just, that was just point of reference. <laughs> thanks for the, thanks for sharing that, babe. I, I really appreciate that. I'm yeah. so glad that you got that out. I'll never forget <laughs> it. I just was like, oh, no, okay. <laughs> I don't think he yelled at me. He was just like, what are you doing? Oh, my God. That must be a fucking hilarious moment as a parent. Can you imagine? Uh, I wonder if he remembers. I wonder if I should ask him. Maybe not. Someone so said... Can you speak about rebuilding relationships after narciss- narcissist abuse? Oh, wait, hold on. It's based on, let's ask Tori because she's young and smart. It's based on Oedipus Rex, who was orphaned, then fell in love with his mom, who didn't know what, who he didn't know was his mom. It's a Greek story. Okay, so I think there's also a, a study too. Okay. okay, now what were you saying? Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Someone just said, how do you build relationships after, you know, being in a narcissistic abusive relationship? 
Um, I think it takes a lot of self work, alone work. It takes a lot of alone work, a lot of alone work. I I mentioned last I don't know one of these episodes. Oh, I think today's episode. Mm-hmm. I mentioned on today's episode. If you haven't listened to now's the time, um, that I was hanging out with an old relationship, and I was like, "What the fuck was I thinking? This is crazy. This is abuse. Why was I taking this?" And it was just like an epiphany. But I've done so much self work and come so far from that because I was so broken, and you know it just takes like. And I still got in a relationship with the narcissist, <laughs> so it's just constant, constant work of recognizing it and recognizing when you're not valuing yourself and putting yourself first, and then removing yourself and being okay removing yourself faster and faster every time you recognize the red flags. Amen. Also, check out our episode with um, Megan Doherty. She's a narcissist expert loved bomb md i believe it's her instagram um is there a foot person in here uh-huh. oh should we erica got my feet famous because erica's feet are famous this is not a good check list. out my wiki page <laughs> cash up us if you're, if you're on patreon cash you will see us, these please. feet or are my feet clean on the bottom i oh. don't know oh, oh mine okay that was for you toe man <laughs> Or woman, I don't know. Okay, I think that's enough. Oh, yeah, okay. Tori is so smart. Okay, shout out to Tori because she's my favorite, one of my our favorite listeners, our OG listeners. Um, she said, the study is Freud. I knew it, but he's a weirdo. Okay, didn't know that. <laughs> and had a bunch of outlandish claims about pedophilia. Oh, uh, okay, well, maybe we'll scratch that. He wasn't smart, never mind. Tori said, he's not the one, he's not it. Okay, well, you're right, Tori, fuck him. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I need fuck, to do, Freud. I fuck Freud and do more research. <laughs> I figured out why men cheat. It's scientifically believable. Me too. They're not as evolved. Okay. But they're genetically de- de- dis- huh? <laughs> genetically disposition. Disposition to lie. <clears throat> That's why they cheat. Mm. Okay. Well, anyway, I think this may be the end of the episode. I've learned so much. I've shared so much. Um, I'm so <laughs> grateful that you guys decided to give us this great idea today. This was fun. Maybe we need to get more input. Yeah, we need to do this more often. Um, and maybe next time someone will have a hoary. Yes, a good, nasty hoary. Dirty, filthy. Nasty. It's disgusting. Thank you guys for joining us. Whoever's listening, please, if you're on the live, if you're listening, wherever you are, go rate and review this motherfucking podcast. Yes, go on Apple and Spotify, whichever is your place of music and podcasting, and rate and review us. Um, Also, make sure you check out our Patreon. We have bonus episodes there. We have really intimate blog posts. We have sex positions and sex tips and all types of shit. So go to patreon.com backslash badge choices um you can purchase the hat that i'm wearing on our website it's unreleased right now but it is on our site can y'all see it live it says good moms bad choices and it's really 90s and it's really cute we have a few colors and we have kids too so go check that out good moms bad choices.com and what else um follow us on twitter good mom underscore bad girl That's all I got. That's all we got today. That's all I got. We love you. Bye. We love you. Goodbye.